Throughout the 80s and into the 90s, the most dominant word processor for DOS was a program called WordPerfect. I use that a little bit at home, but mostly I remember using it when I went to college, although I eventually stopped using it because it was just so darn expensive. I think uh, the, the student edition was something like $150. And the uh, full full version was something like 300 or more. Uh, and we're talking like $1991 here. So it was very, very expensive. But it was also uh, very powerful. It had a lot of features that uh, businesses needed and used. And businesses everywhere used WordPerfect. It was definitely a critical skill at the time to know how to run WordPerfect, uh, especially if you uh, worked in the legal document industry. Uh, there's a really interesting history about WordPerfect by W.E. Pete Peterson in his book, Almost Perfect. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the video description. I wanted to show what WordPerfect looks like, and this is actually WordPerfect 6.0. It's the last version that WordPerfect put out for DOS. Uh, comes from 1993, and that was a year before WordPerfect got bought out by Novell, and uh, then they were bought out by Corel. So um, this is the last version that WordPerfect uh, uh, for DOS by WordPerfect Corporation. Uh, let's take a quick look here. Now, uh, WordPerfect 6 is not the version I used uh, growing up. I, I used uh, one of the 5 series, either 5.0 or 5.1, I think. Uh, now, to run the program, you just do uh, WP. And you can see that's WordPerfect uh, 6.0 from 1993. Uh, this is the standard uh, uh, user interface you get in most DOS applications. You know, blue background with uh, white text. Uh, the standard thing for WordPerfect on the lower right-hand corner, you can see uh, some information about where I am in the document. Uh, and that menu on the top, I seem to recall that was new in uh, in like one of the five series, although there was an option. Uh, and it was presented by default in WordPerfect 6. I also think WordPerfect 6 introduced a new feature, and that's graphics mode, which we'll look at in a second. Now let's uh, just write out a sample document, just kind of uh, have something to work with. Uh, and so I'll just say, uh, hello uh, world. Uh, this is a sample. I'm having some trouble typing, by the way, and I'm not sure if that's a problem with WordPerfect or it's a problem with my emulator. So uh, bear with me as I uh, have some uh, typos uh, that I am writing in WordPerfect uh, 6.0. Let's try some styles, and then we'll do uh, bold, italic, and um, underline. Now, you can actually, uh, you know, enter like bold mode, for example, while you're typing. You don't have to, you don't have to type it and then make it bold later, but uh, I figure this is a good way to do it. Uh, now, I'm just going to use um, arrows to wander over here to the, uh, to the bold, and uh, Let's go ahead and set up a, a block for this. And that's how you need, you're going to mark text using a block. So we'll do the uh, the edit menu. So we'll do Alt E to bring up the edit menu. You can see down there, uh, B will activate the block, or I can do Alt F4. Uh, WordPerfect was uh, one of those programs that used really all the different function keys in your keyboard. And uh, I, I mean, they really did use it. Like uh, the regular function keys did something. Uh, alt function key did something, control function key, shift function key. So they really did take advantage of those uh, uh, function keys. In fact, WordPerfect came with a little template for your keyboard that you'd put along the function key row uh, to remind you what everything did. Or if you had the the one the, the keyboard that had uh, the the, uh, the the function keys on the one side in a, in a in sort of a rectangle, you had another template uh, just to slip over that. Uh, let's go ahead and start a block. And now we can uh, highlight my bold text, and now I can go under Font, which is Alt-O, and I can turn that into bold. Or I could just hit uh, F6, but here we'll just make it bold. And you can see that uh, standard for DOS, it's going to uh, make that a, uh, a bright white. We're going to do the same thing over here for uh, the italics text. So we'll do Block, and we'll highlight the italics, and then we'll go into Font, and we'll turn on italics. And then uh, same thing for underline. So we'll do edit uh, bold, and then we'll highlight our block, and we'll highlight everything, go into font, and we'll turn on underline. You can actually do, as I say, a lot of different things here. You can do uh, bold, underline, double underline, italics, outline, shadow, small caps, uh, redline text, strikeout. So there's a lot of different ways to format text here, but I'm just going to do a simple underline. Uh, and so this is uh, one thing that, that WordPerfect also lets you do, by the way, is uh, you could do a thing called reveal codes. This was something that 
I don't, I don't think I've seen an other word processor since then. It's very similar to looking at HTML source code in that it actually lets you see where bold begins and ends, italics begins and ends, things like that. So if I go into uh, edit, I think it's in the edit menu, um, or it's in the view menu maybe, uh, reveal codes. And so on the bottom of the screen, uh, you can see the reveal codes. And so uh, I can move my, my cursor left and right, and I can actually move off of that underline off and then into the text itself. You can see the uh, cursor on the, up, on the uh, upper part of the screen moving around. And then I'm going to go into underline on, but the, if the cursor doesn't move. Uh, and so you can actually, uh, this is a great way if you'd uh, somehow stacked a bunch of uh, formatting commands uh, with nothing inside it, like a bunch of bold and italics and things like that. You could go into uh, the, uh, uh, the reveal codes and actually go in and, and highlight these and just, just click, you know, delete. And now I've gotten rid of uh, italics for that. Uh, now let's go ahead and, and uh, uh, mark that as, as italics again. So we'll edit uh, block and then we'll highlight that and go under font and then italics and you can see it turn italics back on uh, let's turn that uh, view codes off again here so reveal codes and uh, let's let's take a look here at uh, the view and we can flip it into graphics mode you can actually see what the uh, document looks like in graphics mode and so this is kind of a what you see is what you get uh, approximation of your document. This was uh, uh, something that in the book, Almost Perfect, he talks about uh, this was kind of a tough thing for them to add. Now you can see I'm still using the uh, uh, the, the, the typewriter font, the, the monospace font, uh, but you are seeing uh, bold, italic, and underline. Now another thing that uh, WordPerfect also supported was uh, I mentioned that font. You can actually flip it into a different font. So let's go into the font menu and just hit return on font. And uh, here I've got uh, the menu here. I can hit one to bring up the font, or I can do Alt F uh, to bring up the font menu. And you can see, uh, yep, it's putting me in by default by in, in this Courier Roman font. Uh, we can actually try a whole bunch of different fonts down here. We can do uh, uh, Dutch, which is kind of a uh, sort of a Times style font. Uh, and then down below, you see there's a Helvetica font, and uh, there's a Roman font. Uh, and there's a Swiss font, which is kind of a nice looking uh, sort of uh, sort of aerial uh, style font. Uh, so we can actually uh, put our uh, document into one of these other fonts. Let's let's put it let's put it in Dutch 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 uh, uh, Roman, which is basically sort of a Times uh, type font. And let's type some text here. So uh, this text is in a different. Font now, uh, when I when I run it in graphics mode, uh, it's it's running much slower, like noticeably slower. I don't recall this was a major problem at the time, but I didn't really use this version, so maybe it was. Uh, and if I flip it back into the standard view, so I go back into the view mode and in text mode, you can see that uh, uh, it's just putting me back into the the plain, uh, you know. Uh, you can't actually see that there's the font there, but if you can, if you move the cursor around, you can see that uh, in the lower left-hand side of my screen, I can see that's uh, this telling me what font that I'm in. And if I go up one, you can see uh, that it turns that font back off because it's sort of the the standard typewriter uh, font. But uh, you know, moving the, the the cursor back down, you can see it, it gives me the font again. So that's kind of a neat way to uh, you know, add these these different features to your documents. Now, uh, WordPerfect has a lot of different features which I could go into in terms of uh, columns and tables and things like that, but uh, it is uh, a little slow for me to run in this emulator. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just pause there. Uh, now, before I go, I want to uh, thank everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you very much for that. Uh, some of you are supporting me at a higher level and I wanted to recognize you here. So thank you again. Uh, visit our website at freedos.org, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.